No fancy tools, no problem. I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. And this is DIY Detail. Today, we have a special vehicle, a throwback to the 90s, a 98 Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX. This is all wheel drive. This was super high tech back in its day. It's even more high tech now because it's got 650 horsepower. So a lot of fun, a lot of, uh, a lot of power there for this small car. Yeah, I mean, some updates, obviously. The wheels look nice, but this is all original paint. So we don't want to do anything aggressive. And we want to show you that if you have a dual action sander sitting in your garage at home, you can get very glossy paint. We are not talking about Riddler, Pebble Beach, show car finish. No. We're talking about anybody can learn this method and you will get shinier paint. It will be ready for a ceramic coating or a wax or a sealant or whatever you want. Exactly. But you can polish and in this video, we're gonna show you how. Right, so no fancy polishers, no fancy pad washer, just rinseless wash, the gold standard, couple pads, couple machines and we're gonna increase the gloss without removing paint. This is all original paint, like Nick said, only has 47,000 miles on it. It's been lovingly cared for all these years. We're just gonna amp up the gloss, remove any little bit of oxidation that could be there before laying down a coating. It has been washed and clayed. So if you're curious, how do I prepare a vehicle for polishing, that's another video. We're gonna show you what to do next. Exactly. So first of all, we never wanna polish with a dry pad. So we take our pad, we touch it to our rinseless wash. You don't need a lot. Squeeze out a little bit of excess there. And this was your rinseless wash bucket, which you use to wash the car. So this is already gonna be there for you. Right. If you, if you follow our methods here. And it's diluted 256 to one, standard dilution. One ounce of rinseless wash to two gallons of water, if you're curious what the dilution ratio actually means. And then once we put it back on the machine, we don't touch the water with it, but just <laughs> Spin out the excess liquid, and we're ready to go. The pad isn't wet. It's literally just damp. Haven't used this one in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Not used to it, but it's pretty simple. And you removed the pad brake on this, didn't you? Yes. So some of them, some machines will have a pad brake. If it can't free spin like this, it's very easy. You take the backing plate off couple screws, you'll see what the pad brake is and you'll be able to modify it. Did you show them how to put the polish on already? Yep. Backing plate is spinning, I think, however I do this. <sighs> While it's still spinning, one firm spray, thousands of little droplets go on your pad face. Easy as pie. there overlapping patterns up right. down up down left right left right up down up down no pressure on the machine very simple we're going for gloss not super insane defect removal right there's no super insane defects to remove on this one luckily exactly but detailers you know how they are they're gonna yeah. go for whatever they can find and with a rinseless dampened towel we wipe off the excess polish then. Trade you? Yeah. Or another, just grab that from me? With another towel. Lightly give it a buff. And there we have it. We've increased the gloss dramatically. It's looking better. And now I'll be ready for ceramic coating. Let's grab this guy from you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ivan, what coating is this beautiful vehicle going to be wearing? Gonna be wearing our three-year graphene coating. Now, I don't know if you can tell the difference, but it's just a slight gloss boost. Right. I can tell the difference for sure between yeah. this panel and that one. Yeah. No doubt. Woo! I love that. So you take the pad off, dip it in rinseless. I promise you guys, once you figure the system out, you're absolutely gonna love it. Wet pad, slightly damp that is. One spray, boom. Ivan, there might be some pros out there who knock this method and I promise you, do not knock it until you try it. The ease with which you could just carry this with one hand and just lightly gloss the paint 
It's pretty amazing. It is, and it's the same action as some professional polishers. It's a dual action polisher. So it's doing the same job. Yes, it's inexpensive. Yes, it doesn't have the fancy uh, bells and whistles, but it actually does the job we need it to do. If you're working in not such a controlled environment, this is a great way of doing it where you can control the outcome quite easily, even if you're working outside. Graphene coating means shake it up. Gotta shake it up, just like quick beads. Yeah. Shake it up the Taylor Swift way. I believe that was a song of hers, shake it up. Could be wrong. Let me know in the comments below. Could be. Also, while Ivan gets ready to coat, listen, if you're finding value in these videos, you know what to do on YouTube. I don't want to overdo it, but do subscribe to our channel to support us. We love to create this content to help you out. How many drops are we putting on the applicator, Ivan? Roughly around 10 drops. I'll start on the, uh, the hood, the bonnet, whatever you want to call it, the engine cover, and off we go. So applying in a circular motion, and the reason we're doing circular motion is it spreads the coating evenly, and you have a less chance of high spots. Every time you stop and start, so if you're doing lines like this, every time you start and stop, you have a risk of a high spot. Now we give you a five minute open time. From the time you're done with this panel, you have five minutes, so you can essentially coat half the car at once, but if you're in really humid conditions, if the weather is a little bit off, so controlled environment is what we're talking about here, humid conditions, you might need to start leveling the excess of the coating a little bit earlier. So as Ivan talks about, if your coating towel is getting wet, then you're not giving it enough time. But if you're dealing with high spots that are difficult to rub off, you're probably letting it sit for too long. So the sweet spot is, you've let it sit long enough, you're watching, what, at least half of the coating sort of appear to evaporate? Exactly. So it's cross-linking into the paint, and once 50% of it is cross-linked in, then you can try wiping it. And if it feels like you're dragging liquid around, if it feels like you're working, then give it another minute. And if it immediately goes slick, your towel just glides over it, you have no high spots, then you found the sweet spot. And I think with the five minutes, the messaging here is you can work more than one panel at a time. You don't have to do half the car at a time, but the idea is it's not like 30 seconds after you absolutely have to wipe off or you're gonna be sanding these off. No, no. You have a couple of hours to get those high spots, worst case scenario, and if you see something, and this is within that first hour or two window, it's a high spot, it's not leveling out, take your applicator with the ceramic coating still on it, dab it on the area, immediately, buff the towel, and you're gonna be good to go. All right, so we're at about two minutes. I'm just gonna see how this goes for me here. Wiping off very easy. So I'm just gonna choose to do that, because Ivan, you're doing great over there. You're uh, kicking butt and taking names halfway across the car. Right, well, applying a ceramic coating doesn't need to be difficult. It doesn't need to be stressful. It's simply, you're getting it on the paint. And once it's on the paint, you don't need to go over it three or four times. You know, a lot of people, when they're applying a ceramic coating, they apply it and they keep going over it and keep going over it. That's really not necessary. It's a chemical reaction that's happening. The more you rub it, you're not getting more into the paint. So Ivan, we have two people here, obviously. This is the most efficient way to apply a coating. And with this installation process, if we were at one of your trainings, how would you guide us on the best way to do this? So the one person is applying the next person is wiping off. The person wiping off is actually the key person in the group. So if you uh, have one person with more experience than the other, technically speaking, the more experienced person should be the one wiping off. And it's also really good to communicate. So right. I've done the hood, the quarter, what's next? Mirror, a pillar, roof, and then the door and rocker panel. Full roof or half? This half. Okay. What did you do first? The A pillar. Okay. The See, mirror. I'm over communicating here. The A pillar, the mirror, the roof. Okay. And I, this really does feel like the sweet spot to me. The, the wipe off, the leveling is so easy. Right. And once you find that sweet spot, especially in a team of two, you just keep going. You can either stop watch it or you can go by and feel. Right down to this body line. Ivan, how do you feel about it when I say go by feel? Does that scare you? No, 
This is something that you can go by feel. We really do want you to enjoy it. It's just, we also offer all the technical stuff that if you get into a pinch where you see a high spot, again, the red applicator there, the seal it and coating applicator, it'll usually have leftover coating on it. Dab it on that high spot, level right away, and it's just like this magic trick. It's like, oh, I don't have a high spot after all, I'm fine. Yeah. And you've done the whole door? Whole door, rocker panel, heck yeah. Then the back fender. Some might wonder, why would I choose the three-year coating? And my answer to that is the graphene. I, right. Can you explain what the benefits of graphene are? Benefits of graphene are water spot resistance. Now, why do we not have graphene in the five-year and the three-year coating? Because of that amazing water spot resistance. It's not water spot proof, by the way. But that water spot resistance over time, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting emotional here. No, <laughs> water spot resistance over time basically goes away. And it doesn't go away quickly. It's not, a, it's not actually a time thing. It's more of an abrasion thing. So if you've washed your car over and over again, um, you, know, you may have taken it through a car wash or two. Not this one, don't worry. It's never going through a car wash in this life. Uh, then you have the possibility of wearing away that graphene matrix. And the graphene forms like a matrix on the surface that eventually you're gonna scar it. And those scars negate the effect of the graphene. So after you're done, the rear quarter panel, the spoiler on top and below. Okay. And you'll notice I'm skipping panels here and there. That's so we don't get in each other's way. Because if I were to do the trunk lid and the rear bumper, Nick won't have time to wipe off the spoiler. So as he's wiping off the spoiler, I'll apply to the roof here. And that way, I'll be able to go to the next section or go back to that section while he's wiping off the roof. What do you like about our new coatings, Ivan? I know you've installed hundreds of coatings over 20 years. Um, it's hard to surprise you, but we worked hard on these. Curious what, what you think sets these apart. Well, first of all, ease of application. And that was you know, one of our primary goals. Second is just the characteristics that you want with every coating, which is ease of application, the gloss, the slickness, the self-cleaning ability. All of that is there, and it's there very prominently. And of course, chemical resistance and all that other fun stuff. But you know, the, the sexy part of coating, the gloss, the slickness, the water beading is definitely there with all three of our coatings. Now the five year has a little more gloss than the other two. The three year has the high slickness. And the eight year is the most self-cleaning of our coatings. So the A pillar in the mirror, yeah. Then the trunk lid. If you like second generation Mitsubishi Eclipses, this is a great example of one. It has 47,000 miles, so not a lot of miles. The interior is basically new, but the engine is not exactly stock. It's got a little over 600 horsepower to the four wheels. I'm kind of listening to you, Ivan, but I'm in my zone. Right, it's me and the coding. We're having a conversation. I'm so, listening. So rear fender, paying attention, sending it my intention of having an amazing life together. Now one important part of any coating application is the preparation. This vehicle, the paint, was in great shape to begin with, but we gave it a light polish just to make sure, and of course before polishing, we did some decontamination. Yeah, we did some decontamination with the wash, right? Then we dried it off, polished it, and then I went ahead and um, used a nice plush soft microfiber, our standard edgeless, with our panel prep, and did a nice wipe down to make sure everything was squeaky clean before we applied the coating. Right, and now the rear bumper, starting on the driver's side, is all done. Now, you can't see me here, but if you don't subscribe and hit that notification bell, you may not see us either. But by hitting that notification bell, when we put out a new video, you'll see us. This gets so slick so fast, Ivan. 
it sure does. And after that, the door, including the rocker panel. Then we have the front fender and the front bumper to do, go over the glass, and we're done. Now a vehicle this size, you'll actually easily get two vehicles out of one bottle. If you have a full size SUV, might be a different story. You definitely get at least one vehicle out of the bottle. They're a one ounce or 30 milliliter bottle, so a lot of coating, a lot of value, and lots of protection for your paint. I'm gonna be doing the headlights, and of course, the whole front bumper. The intercooler on this is huge. Prominently displayed where the front grille used to be. Front bumper's all done, we do the windows, and we're complete. And one important characteristic of the coating that we don't mention quite enough is it's anti-static. So your car is gonna stay cleaner longer. Half the windshield, all the side windows, and half of the sunroof. Now the first day or two, it's actually not anti-static. As the coating is curing, it will attract a bit of dust, but don't worry about it, and don't wash your vehicle for seven days. You wanna let the coating cure properly. Now in one hour, it's cured enough that you can drive the vehicle, even in the rain. If you can wait longer, it's never a bad thing. But for the first week, you wanna stay away from harsh chemicals if you can. If you do have to clean it an emergency, like a bird bomb, well, what do you do there, Nick? Take a little bit of waterless wash, or if you have rinseless wash in your bottle at 256 to one. Yep. A couple sprays on the panel, plush microfiber, gently wipe it off, buff dry, and you're good to go. Exactly. You're good to go, Ivan. Yeah, that's how I feel. And then after a week, you get to have the joy of washing your vehicle again. And if you've never <laughs> and again, washed- And again, <laughs> Oh, if you've never washed a ceramic coated vehicle, it is an amazing thing to do. It really is. It just, that's my favorite thing about ceramic coatings. Ease of clean. Right. Ease of clean. And as Ivan continues to apply, I'm just and checking my angles, making sure there's no high spots. Yep. A lot of these body lines, or right between the doors, under door handles, those are gonna be your high spot, hot spots. Right, and don't forget the sunroof, Nick. Yep. Speaking of possible high spots, I need to get this. And while Nick is finishing up wiping, I'll take another lap around the vehicle to make sure we don't have any high spots. Is there one vehicle you've fallen in love with along your detailing journey where you wish that was yours, that you detailed? Not really. I've had many, many vehicles over my life, and uh, when I wanted something, I bought it. I've never had a really high-end exotic, per se, but that's not my, my cup of tea either, so. You like your red Italian exotics. Well, yeah, I have a, a very exotic Italian two-seat manual trans, or four-seat, sorry, but two-door convertible manual transmission. It even has a sport mode. It is a Fiat 500, so don't worry. Uh, so some high spot, hot spots. Basically areas where you can get high spots, unfortunately. And they're often neglected, uh, but you need to look out for them. Basically any intersection of panels, that's always a spot for high spots. Around the mirror is definitely one, and we actually do have a high spot here, so we'll wait till Nick is done. Very good. If you do find a high spot, just add a bit of coating with your applicator and immediately buff it off. What you're doing is re-wetting that high spot, and you got about an hour to do this. Maybe two, depending on the temperature. But as soon as you're done applying, walk around the vehicle, take a look, round door handles, panel gaps, Wherever two panels meet, uh, this spoiler could be a potential high spot area because there's a lot going on here in terms of angles. Wherever there's an angle, a 90 degree corner, you wanna look out for. We have uh, lights indented into the bumper. It's another thing we wanna check just to make sure around the license plate. Nick has done a spectacular job here, so. And with that, Ivan, we're at about 20 minutes, and I knew we could stream a code this vehicle in 20 minutes. Exactly. So it's doable with two people. It might take you a little longer solo. Don't skimp on the last step looking for high spots thing, but other than that, it's dummy simple. It was very relaxing. I enjoyed myself, did you? Always. 
Detailing is fun. Detailing needs to be fun. It's relaxing, it's enjoyable, and you get to see these spectacular results. And if you like spectacular results and amazing looking cars, maybe even ceramic coatings, you're gonna wanna go here. That is where we will see you next.